the best part of it. Hey everybody, my name is Dowden. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make hard driving techno like Amelie Lenz and Charlotte DeWitta. Both Charlotte and Amelie are dominating the techno scene right now, and I wanted to do a different style of video than my usual deep and progressive stuff, so I decided to cover these two amazing artists. For the low end of the tracks by Amelie and Charlotte, we have a driving but aggressive kick and bass, and it sounds like this. Percussion and drums is extremely rhythmic and full sounding and aggressive and it sounds like this. And their tracks can contain vocals and acid type driving leads and they sound something like this. So we're going to jump into the video, but before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want access to the Ableton project files, samples, presets, and arrangement, make sure to click on that description below to gain access to the downloads. This type of driving techno in BPM ranges anywhere from 126 to 140, 145 BPM. The range is very large from low to high. And we're going to stick with 134 for this project, just kind of meet in the middle. And the key of the track is in a minor, but it's the Phrygian mode. We'll talk about that a little bit more later in the track. Okay, so first we're gonna start with the kick drum. And after we process that kick drum, we're going to turn it into the bass and the low end of the track using something called a smear or rumble effect. And it's processing that you, you see a lot in techno music where they take the low energy and make it into this really rhythmic rumble or this very over compressed, oversaturated smear of low end. And it's very grungy, it's very aggressive, and it's very popular and super easy to do. So let's go ahead, first we'll do the kick drum and then we'll move into the bass smear using that kick drum. So let's hear the kick drum by itself. I have a lot of mid presence on this kick drum that I've created. It doesn't have too much sub, but we're going to fix that with the processing. I really just wanted to make sure that it had that nice punchy smack in the middle of the frequency spectrum. And that is to really help it punch through. With techno kicks like Charlotte and Amelie's, you usually have a really nice mid presence that really helps smack through and it gives a lot of aggression to the track. First thing I'm going to do is grab an EQ. With that EQ, I'm going to press Control or Command G to create a group. Rename the first one to Kick. The second I'll rename to Smear. Turn off that channel. We don't need it. We only need this Kick channel. And I'm going to grab a compressor. And right away, we're just going to really compress this Kick. So turn this up a lot. Attack all the way down to zero. I'm just chopping off the very top of the sound and boost this up by about 5 dB. Just giving it a little bit more of a compressed sound, very subtle. Next, I'm going to grab a Dynamics, a multiband Dynamics, and I'm going to throw that on after the compressor. So this is going to be kind of like a three band EQ right now. I'm actually not really using it for compression. I might use it after, but I just want to give a little bit of a boost to the high end, a little bit to the mids, with a nice smack, and then the low end. We're starting to clip already, so I'm just going to turn that down. Maybe turn the output down a little bit more. You'll see me balancing out the kick here because the, the sample itself was a little bit quieter, so I had room to add volume with my processing. As I'm increasing levels of processing and increasing the, the volume, I will be turning down the volume here as well to kind of balance it out. Okay, next to so what I can add is an overdrive. So this is going to give us a saturated signal. It's going to give a bit more grit to the kick. It's going to help it punch through a bit more and just sound overall more aggressive. Don't really want to grab so much low end. Otherwise, it's very distorted. Dry wet down a little bit and let's put the dynamics all the way up. a bit more aggression there. That's pretty much it for the kick right now. Last, what I'll do is throw a utility on and we'll take this down to mono because we don't want the low end to be in stereo. We want it to be in mono and I'm putting it on after this group. 
you see where the wrapper ends here, because I'm going to be putting the processing of the smear or the base rumble in this as well in the same channel. So I'm going to mono both. So now we're going to focus on the smear or the bass rumble of the track. This low end is usually very aggressive and distorted sounding and sometimes rhythmic as well. And we're going to use the kick to create this smear and then some additional percussive elements to give it that nice rolling rhythm. So I'll go into my smear channel here and I'll turn this on. And the first thing we're going to do is grab a reverb. So reverb is going to give us that big open-ended sound. We're going to put the reverb up to 100%. So let's take a listen to how it sounds with just reverb. Doesn't sound very good yet. So let's add some pre-delay. And we'll turn the kick on so we can hear the actual pre-delay coming in. And this is just making room for that kick to punch before, almost like a side chain compression. But it also adds a bit of rhythm. Maybe a bit more decay time. Okay, and then we're going to add some saturation. So let's grab a saturator, throw that on there. I'm going to push this up quite a bit. Let's turn our kick off now. This is where we're going to get that nice rumble. We're going to grab an auto filter and throw that on there and filter out all that high end distortion. Mm-hmm. There it is. There's that techno rumble we were looking for. Great. So now we're going to add some side chain compression. Make room for that kick to punch through. Put a very quick attack, very quick release. And let's pull this down. A little bit faster. It's going to be a quick kick, so I want that side chain compression kind of just come in and out really fast. It's not reducing back to zero because it's a constant sound. So it's not always going to cut back to zero, but we are getting quite a pump here. And I'm going to push this volume up quite a bit on the, uh, on the gain compensation. And let's turn our kick back on. Oh, honey, super huge sounding. Oh man, I miss Berlin. If you wanted to filter out more of the rumble, get more of a sub or more of an aggression, you can do that with the filtering and the saturation. Around 15, 16 is good for me. And now the final touch would be some EQ on the entire channel and drum bus. You can separate these if you like. But I'm just going to leave it as they are right now. You can put them into two different channels, but they are okay with me right now in the group. So I'm totally fine with that. And uh, I'm happy to use the drum bus processing on both. It's going to limit them together, feel a little bit more glued together. And then the EQ can work as a whole unit. Want to push our low end up. We don't have too, too much sub. Like we are hitting around here. Uh, so I want to push up a little bit more low end with the drum bus. So. I'm going to turn my drum bus on and keep in mind that a stock drum bus, even with the drive off, it is still adding a limiter. So listen to the difference. Way louder. So just got to be careful of that. If you ever throw a drum bus on something, it is going to make it louder most of the time. Push our drive up. Crunch up a little bit. Maybe not so much. Dampening it down a little bit. And the boom. So the boom is going to be the sub frequencies, the low end. I'm going to push this frequency up to an A because that's the key of the track that we are in. And then click this to bring this up to the actual. See how it's at 54.8. Press this right here. It's going to bring it up to the, uh, the exact frequency there. Uh, and we're going to push our boom up. We are clipping a bit on the master, so let's turn down the volume of our kick. And we just have that solid, solid low end that is dirty. Or as I like to say, dut. 
So for the next element, I'm going to make this percussion like more like a smear, and it's going to have this rhythmic element to it to really help the track feel more driving and catchy. So I just have this tom here. It's actually going to be two elements that we're using to really encourage that rhythm. First is this tom that's been pitched up a few semitones to be in key. And then I have this conga. So they're just following basic rhythms. Let's test it with a kick. So it's not the most catchy right away, but once I add some processing, it's going to sound really neat. So let's take this perk smear, solo it. First, I need to EQ out that low end. There's just way too much considering we already have the low end. So I'm going to put a high pass filter on there. And then I'm going to go up to my kick and actually just duplicate this smear rack over. So pro tip, save this as a rack, save it as a, a rack here, an instrument rack by clicking the save button. And then you can bring it into your track whenever you want to use it instead of having to redo everything. So let's just go ahead and drag and drop that smear rack onto the perk. And let's get rid of that kick channel. We don't need that anymore. So just the smear. We can't really hear much. Turn down the reverb. Looks like we still have some low ends. Let's get rid of that. And we have the filter on here and the compressor. We don't need them right now. I definitely don't want the filter, so we'll take that off. There we go. So what's going to make this even more interesting and way more rhythmic is to add some delay. So grab a delay, throw that on. I'm going to throw that on after the reverb. I want to add some delay to that reverberated sound. Reverberated. And we're going to duplicate that delay. We'll have two delays. And we'll turn the second one off. I'm going to put the feedback between 50 and 60%. Dry wet will bring a little bit lower because we're going to be using two of these. And we'll keep these at three here. That already sounds pretty cool. Maybe a bit more dry wet. And listen to the kick now. already way more catchy, way more rhythmic. You can tell by my amazing dance moves. So let's add another delay. I know, I know, crazy, crazy. And we will change the timing of this. So I'll put ones here. So we're going to get more of a fast, more rolling feeling. More some feedback. Maybe some more dry wet. Throw it from below. We have the saturator that's bringing up that grit. Maybe a little bit less reverb. Great. And now we have that rhythmic aspect as well that's really driving that. Let's go into the second one here. And let's just go ahead and grab this smear rack now. And we could even save this one and rename it to Delay smear rack and now we have both the kick smear rack for the bass and this delayed smear rack for percussive elements and things let's take a listen right away so it already sounds way cooler let's change these timings of the delay so we'll go maybe one two and then maybe one and one so maybe we'll have a little bit more low end and less high end. Sounds a little too distorted for me. And let's make sure we turn the side chain compression on both of these so that the kick really punches through. Turn the output down a little bit. Just doing some slight mixing to make it sound a little bit more balanced. So now you can hear how much rhythm and groove that adds by adding these percussive elements. And you can try this with different rhythms as well. You can have any kind of rhythm that you like in here and play with the delay settings and it's going to help build that rhythmic groove aspect. 
Even these ones that weren't that groovy, by adding a delay to them, it made them super groovy. So try different patterns in here. Maybe we'll turn them down just a little bit more and we'll start focusing on some of the other percussive elements. Basically, for the hi-hat, super, super simple, old school, 909, just gives us that nice... Super simple, just kept it on the off beats, nothing else so far. We'll add some EQ. And some reverb as well. Very slight amount of reverb. And we'll add a pretty long decay time, I guess. And I mean, a little over a second. Low cut on. I'm bringing that high cut up so we get more of that high sizzle. Maybe a little bit less reverb. I'm adding that little bit of extra tail on the decay just to really kind of bring it over into the next hi-hat. Change the color to yellow. Something I forgot to mention before is now that we have this smear here, notice how after I'm, I press play and pause it, I still hear that tail. If you want to avoid this, you can actually flatten this. You could bring it out into its own channel, or you could resample it and flatten it, and you won't get that reverb every single time. And it's actually advised to so that it's, it's down mixed to a sample and that you're not going to wait for the reverb to kind of kick in. You can do the same things with the delays as well here. We could freeze and flatten them so that the first hit isn't waiting for that delay to kind of pick up. It's already in the sample. I noticed in some of Amelie's tracks that she has these 16th hats. She brings them in to kind of keep the track moving along, keep it interesting, keep it fresh. So I'm just going to grab this hat here and throw that in, change my grid to 16th. And first, I'm just going to pitch this down a couple semitones. And we'll do 16th notes, so I'll grab here, duplicate that over. And as the track's playing, you can actually bring this in and out to keep it more interesting. Right, it just adds a little bit extra we'll EQ out some of that low end. It's pretty crunchy. And some of the high end as well. We're a little bit low, so I'm just going to push up the transposition a couple semitones. Super simple, just to add a little bit extra flavor. Okay, now we're going to get into this syncotom. So it's a syncopated tom, and it's going to add even more rhythm and more groove. Let's take a listen to just the tom. And it's going to actually accent the bass a little bit. So I'm going to push this up closer to the top, right underneath the kick and the bass. And we have the kick and the syncopated tom. So what I'm going to do is EQ out some of the low end. I just... I kind of just want it to accent, so it's boom, ba-dum, boom, ba-dum. But I already have so much going on in the low end that I don't really need the low end in this tom. You could use it instead of the other elements, or you could take some of the rumble out and use this, but I'm just going to use this as a more of a slight accent. So I'm going to compress and side chain compress the crap out of it to the kick because I really don't want it to interfere. Maybe a little less. It doesn't have low end really, so let's hear it again. With this. It kind of just gives that like a little bounce back. Bum, ba dum, bum, ba dum. It's subtle, but I, I do hear it and I think it's actually sounding pretty cool. We have one more percussive element, which is going to be the rides. And similar to the 16th, you kind of bring these in wherever to kind of make the track keep on building in your arrangements. You don't need to have them all the time, but you can increase energy by bringing them in and make the track more interesting by you know bringing them in and out. So let's do the rides first, and then I will show you what I mean. So for the rides, I use a simple 909, very popular, and the MIDI information is just every eighth note. I'm just using this 909 ride, slightly faded in, and I'm using the one-shot mode so that it plays out every time. Views classic. 
it'll cut depending on the MIDI. So I'm using one shot. And then this is where the fun really comes in. You add a compressor, compressor, throw that in there, and you sidechain to the kick. And you really duck this down. And we'll play with the attack and release settings after, but you really squash that and then play with the attack and release. We'll add a bit of reverb on here as well. And the idea is we really want to get that nice pumping effect. But it's a pretty fast tempo, obviously. And we can add some has effect. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know exactly what this is. A stereo delay with some widening settings. And I'm going to check in mono to see if it's cutting out too much of that. We're definitely losing a little bit, but it's not that obvious, so I think it should be okay. It should still sound okay in mono. And then as the track's playing... Right? It adds that extra layer of expression and aggression and it's super fun just to play around with these and turn them on and off as you're arranging your track to find kind of the best places to put them if you really wanted to spice it up you could add a saturator but i think it's already pretty aggressive as it is so i'm not going to do that i also put my side shake compression after the reverb so i'm also going to be squishing that reverb signal i usually wouldn't do this but because it's such a fast track and the kick is hitting so fast we're not getting that much of a pumping from the 909s. So I'm going to actually compress the reverb as well so that it's really squishing as much as I really can out of that without kind of overlapping the sidechain compression. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the lead element of the track. This is like an acid type lead, very similar to a lot of Amelie and Charlotte's tracks. It's that gritty big room sound and it's very driving and energetic. So what's important to consider when creating melodies in techno, especially this style of hard techno, you want to focus on the rhythmic aspect as much as you do the notes in the melody. Usually you want a driving, repeating melody that is going to encourage the high energy of the track. And usually we are in a minor key and a form of the minor key that is called Phrygian, where the second note is actually reduced by one semitone. So we're going to talk about all of that in just a moment. But for now, let's just look at the rhythm that I have for this lead. So I'm just going to grab a wavetable, throw that on this channel that I called the depth. So I just grabbed this rhythm and I, I thought of a rhythm in my head first and then I just hummed along to it and wrote it down. And you want to keep it on a single note just to not complicate it and just hum along. Do 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 or do 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 you know rhythms like that that are going to be driving and rolling. And then I drew in that melody here. Super simple, but catchy, groovy, and driving. Then I'm going to change this into a sawtooth wave, and we're going to start to build out this sound. And then I'm going to go into the next steps of how to make this melody more complicated and more interesting. We have a sawtooth on oscillator 1 and a square on oscillator 2. I'm going to push the semitone down 12. And I'm just going to turn this down for now. Okay, so now that I have the first rhythm section laid out for the melody, I'm going to add some octaves to this by just grabbing random notes and bringing them up and down in the octaves but really thinking about what i'm doing as i'm doing it and this is what i came up with here so i'll click fold i've added an extra note here added an octave here lowered one added one lowered one and then let the rest kind of just run out i'm going to spice it up even more by moving one of these into the next note from the scale So I just push this note from the A to the A sharp in that higher octave. And then last what I'm going to do is actually add a bit of glide to the sound. So on the second and fourth note here, I've actually made the notes a little bit longer so that they glide into the next one. And we have to turn the glide on in Wavetable. So I go over here where it says poly and I change that to mono. And then this glide is now available to be put up. I'm going to put it to around 600 to 700 milliseconds and check this out. Hear how it ramps up to the next note? I'll put the glide a little higher so you can really hear what's going on when I hit these different notes.
So by adding this glide, I can give us that kind of ramping up to the next note. So now that we have the melody, I'm going to copy it all the way over here, loop this section, and then I'm going to start to make the actual sound in Wavetable. So now that I have the melody laid out, I'm going to start to build the sound, which is two layers, and we're going to start with the first layer here. So it changes to a band pass filter and push up the resonance quite a bit. So a little bit lower now, one whole octave. And then I'm going to push on the matrix my filter envelope 2 on the filter here. So envelope 2, filter up to about 50 or 60. And bring that sustain down a little bit. The decay I'm also going to bring down so it's much quicker. And you can hear how it's starting to shape now, it's starting to sound more and more like that acid pluck. I'm going to throw an overdrive on there and get some distortion. Put an EQ on after the overdrive so we're getting some distortion on the low end as well. And scooping it out. Great, and I'm going to add an auto filter on here. And I'm going to put the LFO up and change this to a band pass. Push this really high up. Right, so it's going to be doing that, but I'm going to use the LFO. The speed down. So we're getting that movement, but it's too much. I don't want that whole area to be affected. So I'm going to actually group this together and I'm going to duplicate the chain. The first tra chain is going to be dry. The second is going to be wet. So if I click here on this chain, we get this chain selector area and I can pull over this chain all the way to the right. And this one all the way to the right. And then this gray area we can bring all the way to the left, and this one all the way from the left to the right. And over here will be the full dry signal. Make sure I delete the auto filter out of the dry, and anything over on this side will be 100% dry, and anything over on this side will be 100% wet. So I can actually pull this like this. And we're only getting a little bit of that wet now. So I've created a dry wet knob. Go back into the wet, push that up even more. So now we have the dry signal coming through and then a little bit of wet signal on top. Next, I'm going to grab an echo, which is a really nice plugin. And we are going to add some reverb to this and some delay. Awesome. Let's take a little bit more low end. Maybe the feedback on this can come down just a little bit. So it sounds really good so far. We're going to add an additional layer on here to make it even more interesting. Okay, so now the second layer of the lead, we're going to use an operator. And to get this, I'm going to open up this and go over here and group the wavetable. So now I have two chains, grab the operator and throw it in there. For the operator, I'm going to use a sawtooth wave, turn the filter to a bandpass as well, push the resonance up, we'll just solo this sound. It's going to be more of a high kind of eerie sound. Bring down the filter. We'll turn the volume down on this one a little bit. And we'll turn up this envelope amount here. K down. And we'll EQ out some of that low end as well. Great.
great, 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 great. Let's hear both sounds together. Now we can play with the filter here. We can actually automate this. And we can draw in some automation by holding the Alt or Option key and just just by trying to draw a straight line here, I'm actually creating some variation throughout the whole MIDI clip here. And I could do the same thing for the wavetable. Show automation and just try to draw a straight line. And it's going to create a little bit of variation. Turn down the volume a little bit. And now you can really hear how awesome that slide feature is. Let's move on to the last melodic element before the vocal that we're going to be putting in. So the crazy sound that I did, this was it's just some experimenting that I did with resampling. I actually threw on a ton of filters and I created the sound. I just resampled a bunch of reverb and filtering that I did. This will be included in the project files. And I'm just going to throw some reverb on it. And I have some EQ. So the EQ is definitely cutting out that low end and extra high end. And then some reverb on there. Maybe some auto pan. And let's hear that with everything else. So one of Amelie Lenz's signatures is to add her own vocals into her tracks. This is really popular among other artists as well, but Amelie does it quite a lot in her tracks. Usually when adding vocals to techno, it is in a spot that adds to the groove. It sounds kind of trippy and cool. It's usually placed in a way that makes it feel groovy. So I went ahead and recorded my own vocal, something that's really deep and meaningful that I wanted to extend to you. Subscribe to my channel. Mm pure emotion behind that. So with this, I'm going to change it so it sounds more like a female's voice, more like Amelie's voice. So I'm going to have my warp on and transpose it up three or four semitones. If you don't have the warp on, it's going to stretch or condense the sample. So I'm just going to have that. Subscribe. Maybe one more up. Subscribe. And I want to make sure that I'm on the complex or complex pro so that I'm getting a nice quality of, uh, of pitch change here. And then I'm going to change the formants. Subscribe. 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 I'm going to put it a little bit lower, not to zero. Subscribe. Maybe push this up another semitone or two. Subscribe to my channel. And the formants being at 100 is going to be the most authentic sound. It's going to sound more like a female voice. Subscribe to my channel. Still a little low, but definitely more of a high pitched sound. If I bring the formants down, however, we're going to get more of like a hamster sound. Subscribe to my channel. So to make it a little bit interesting and trippier sounding, I'm going to push the formats kind of in between. Subscribe. 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 So we get that like lower pitch and kind of that higher hamstery sound to make it sound a little bit more Subscribe. dark and Subscribe. trippy. And then I'm going to go into the vocal and I'm going to add some effects. First, I'm going to add an overdrive and this is going to make it sound pretty Subscribe to gritty. my channel. Subscribe. Subscribe to Maybe a little bit Subscribe less. to my channel. It's adding a little bit more grit to that sound. I'll throw an EQ on there as well. Subscribe. Take that low end out. My channel. Subscribe to. Okay. And then I want to grab a gate. So this gate is going to remove any of the unnecessary low information that's really quiet. I'll do that after the EQ. Uh, so I'm going to EQ out some of that background noise and then I'm going to use a gate to grab the rest of the background noise. So if we listen to just the emptiness here, and I'll, I'll really turn this up so we can really hear it. But that's like the background noise, the microphone's picking it up, like the fans running on the computer, etc. That background noise you don't want in the recording. So I'm going to use a gate to get rid of that. So turn on the gate 
And I'm going to bring a threshold down. So anything below this threshold is going to be reduced by a certain amount of volume, which is controlled by the floor. So if I bring this up to zero, bring the volume of this clip up a little bit. Subscribe to my channel. So now that I have the threshold kind Subs of pretty low so that anything below this point is going to get turned down, I'll bring my floor down. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. And now we don't hear that background fuzz. Last but not least, I'll throw a compressor on there to really kind of compress those vocals more. And I'm going to make them sound kind of bad intentionally. I want them to sound pretty Subscribe. gritty. Subscribe to my channel. So hard compression. And we'll use about 3 dB of gain. Subscribe to my channel. It's important to add a gate before the compressor because if we compress before the gate, then we're going to be also bringing up those lower sounds as well. You get more of that background noise if we don't use a gate before the compression. So we're going to add some reverb onto there. Subscribe to my channel. A little bit less. There we go. I'm going to place this vocal on where the kick's hitting. Subscribe. Subscribe. And it adds a bit of groove to it. It's, I'm putting it on a place that makes sense to give it a bit more of an encouragement to the groove to make it catchy. All right, everybody. So I've gone ahead and did a quick little mix down and a quick arrangement of the track. If you want access to the project file, the samples, the presets, click the link below for a download of those files. And without further ado, how to make techno like Amelie Lenz and Charlotte DeWitta. everybody thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you learned something if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe and if you like this video make sure to give me a thumbs up and comment below who you want me to cover in my next how to make music like videos